Trixie. Hi, Ademola. Hi, Simbo. Good afternoon. Welcome, 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 everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. So, this is Ask HR as usual. Welcome. And I'm Tife here. Today, we'll be, you know, we'll be going on, we're going live with our sister company, Doberman Ghana. So, with Joseph. I just so give us some minutes. Hi, welcome, welcome. Hi, Joseph. Hi. Hi. Google, how are you? Good. How are you? Hello. Um, welcome. welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome. So basically, today we'll be focusing on people that lost their jobs. You know, we need you to get back on your feet. We need you to seize the next opportunity. Get that dream job. You know, make yourself basically you need to be happy 2020 is not over we can do this we can do this say hi to joseph joseph is joining us from ghana yay welcome joseph hi hi <laughs> all right welcome welcome um as usual we already have some questions here and we're going to you know start immediately huh? all right so um welcome everyone so basically like i said we're going to be focusing on people that lost their job so if you know you've lost your job you lost a job recently you know you have a friend who has lost their jobs just you know send this to them let them come let them come and learn let them know what to do how to get that dream job how to attend interviews you know how to reach out to recruiters let them come live now let them come and learn come with your notes and your your, your notes and your pen so that you can take down notes Okay, Joseph, we can start. It's one or two already. We already have people here. Now, the first question is, I got laid off during the pandemic, and I'm really starting to worry that the career path I'm on is easily dispensable. Otherwise, why didn't I escape getting laid off like others? I want to change my career because of this. Is this a good reason? Joseph, do you want to go first? Um, I think um, it's not very appropriate. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to everyone and welcome to this live session. Um, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be interactive as well. So try and ask all your questions as well and then share your thoughts, share your minds. You never know, we could pick one or two from you. Yes, yeah, so I, going back to your question, basically, I want to say that it's not wrong for you to think of swapping careers even after COVID struck. But the point is, um, like I said in my last um, live session some time ago, um, I would rather think of how to get the best out of myself rather than swap careers. Let's take a typical example. You are in, um, let's say, FMCG, which is the fast moving consumable goods. And then you want to swap careers or you want you are an accountant you want to swap careers to fs you want to add digital to it to make it fintech that is allowed but i would not encourage anybody to swap careers from the part of being into a different whole new career mode i would definitely not allow what i'll allow is for you to grow personally try to get in more skills where we'll get we'll get there um, try to get in more skills that will make you a very indispensable person will make you a very dynamic person to have in a team but for me i would not encourage anyone anybody at all to swap careers at this critical point in time because of that well yeah thank you joseph thank you joseph to all that to add to what you said you know she's asking or he's asking if he's own um you know if his own role is easily dispensable i don't think so i feel like covid came out of the blues you know companies were not ready for it and either instead of owing you salary they just like you know have to let you go so i feel one it's not like i would say it's a blessing in disguise 
but it happened and i don't think because of that you should change your career path if it's something that you do not want maybe you were not happy with your job hey and then they laid you off then you can now go back and think that okay let's you know we try you know rest a bit go back to the blueprint and figure out what you want to do like joseph has already said hi joseph sorry someone said they can't see you that the lightning is bad so can you change your angle so they can see your face properly mm. so pretty much it don't feel yeah you might feel bad you get a new job you get a better job so that's why we're doing this because of you so come and learn what we're going to do come and learn what we have to do you know and then get that dream job of yours so um the question, second question is my morale has been very low since i lost my job how do i find inspiration to start searching again uh oh i think that was network issues um please joseph you can request to join again so it's saying my morale has been very low since i lost my job sorry about that how do i find inspiration to start searching again um First of all, it's sad that you lost your job, but some of these things happen. You know, it might sound really harsh, but you know, it happens, but you have to move on. Um, one thing that can help you, and hello, I lost my job before, I lost my job in 2019, and I'm just going to basically share some of the things that I did that helped me. Now, if you're a busy person, you know, you're up and doing, you don't want to be waking up like 10 a.m., you feel you will not feel accomplished. So first of all, you have to settle into a daily routine. Now for me, what worked, you know, back then, I used to wake up like six because my office wasn't far from the house. And when I wake up by six, you know, you go clean up. And when everybody literally leaves the house, you know, I will not take it upon myself, do something extra. The house might not be dirty, but you know, I'll start moving things. Maybe today I'm focusing on the kitchen so i'll do that for a period of time let's say you know the way traffic is in lagos so i'll do that maybe for like two hours then i'll sit down with my laptop and literally begin my nine to five looking for a job so you have to be able to you know they say this thing that whatever you've not added to your schedule yeah i can't frame it in the right way but if it is not on your schedule then you will not be able to do it so create a schedule for you of what you want to do is it the feeling of a job searching for a job itself is nine to five so you know you have to visit you have to work on your resume you have to start applying reach out to um, um, reach out to recruiters reach out to employers reach out to different people so yes you have to do that first when you settle into a daily routine i feel like it's one of the things that's going to help you now another thing is set measurable goals it's one thing to have a daily routine but then how do you want to be able to how do you want to account for your time? So it's not just like, oh, I'm sitting down and I'm just applying. You feel frustrated. So another thing is you have to set measurable goals. For example, you're looking for a job. You want a job. That's your goal right now. And how do you want to do it? Okay, in a day, I will send 10, I will, I will apply for 10 jobs. You know, you do it that way. So you have to now go and look for, oh, this company, this job, does it fit me? Does it not fit me? Do I have the skills? You know, you're trying to weigh your options. So it's not like you're just applying. Because when I say, say, um, apply for 10 jobs, you might like, uh, you might be like, that's beans. Like, that's very easy. But the whole point is that you want to be able to apply for the jobs that you actually want, not just because, oh, I'm out of a job. I just want to do anything. So be deliberate about it, you know. Set your measurable goals so that you know that you achieve it. Oh, you are starting from scratch now so i'm not saying oh today oh, i'm just starting today and i'm going to you know i'm going to apply for 10 jobs mm -mm. so your first goal should be one your resume you know i want to update it i want to write a good cv i want to be able to write a good cover letter so that should be like your first goal you give yourself okay maybe you're giving yourself 24 hours if you do not know how to write it or two days it's fine Put it that in two days, I should be able to learn this, I should be able to do this, and I should be able to do that. I feel like that's one of the things that is also going to help you. Now, another thing that can help you is make a list of your achievements. Now, the past, whatever has happened has happened. But there are some times that, you know, when you're doing something, it's just, sorry, Joseph is back. So it's just good to, um, it's good to reflect sometimes, you know, maybe 
you won the best sales um you were the sales champion for t1 or t2 you know and all of that so yes you're going to you know have to like okay write down achievements i achieved this i achieved that so anytime that you feel down every time that you feel really you feel down pretty much you can go back and be like oh i did this you know i can do it again i did this i can do it again those things literally they help you they motivate you they keep you pushing because you're like i did this before i can actually do it again so just if i'm just answering the question my morale has been very low since i lost my job how do i find inspiration to start so basically i said settle into a daily routine you know set measurable goals make a list of your achievements now look for opportunities to volunteer guys you don't want to be sitting down at home you know you're wasting away time you're wasting away everything literally because you can be adding to yourself but when you're in the house you're idle you're not doing anything that's going to get you that job that you're looking for then it's just waste of everything even your mental like it's wasting everything literally so you need to volunteer look for places to volunteer and when we say volunteer you have to volunteer towards the like the role that you're looking for if you want an accounting job you know you want to be an accountant you're volunteering you're volunteering to become to be an accountant you know if you want a marketing job you're going to um maybe an advertising agency you know depending maybe a bank you know you volunteer for that particular role because this would help you it will it will help you build the necessary skills skill sets that you need for your dream job so yeah this, that's another thing that you can do then last point is focus on the things you can control mm -hmm. now looking for a job especially when you lost your job and then you're looking for a new one it can be overwhelming you'll be discouraged you feel everything literally all sort of emotions you'll be angered you'll be you'll be so like but then focus learn to focus on what you can control for example you ask me what are the things i can control your resume you want to sell yourself better on your resume you understand you want them to be able to see you focus on things you can control you want to network with recruiters you know you want to network with hr managers you even want to network with even people because you don't know who these people are and what they can do for you joshua do you have just do you have anything to say yes um i want to just add a, a few of them and um Basically, I would look at just sitting back and and just listing your achievements. You know, sometimes, yes, you being job hunting is very demeaning. It also has an impact on your psychological well-being. So when you sit back and you just in turn list the things that you think you have on board, the things that you think that you can do, the, the things you've chopped, the successes you, you've chopped previously. Yeah. It makes you feel that fail factor. It gives you that I can do it attitude all over again, given the opportunity. And that is good for your psychological well-being. Also, when you look at, you take a step back from all the fuss going on. I need a job here. Yeah, I need a job that I went for an interview. It wasn't <laughs> successful. All that would be very demoralizing. So just take a step back, sit back, and just have fun with friends. Don't just be in your own small corner. You see, the fun bit takes your mind off that pressure of you being unemployed. So just take that step back, have time for friends, read a book, yeah. write a novel, write an article, share your experiences with people that you think will need them. And I couldn't agree more with you when you say volunteer. You have to volunteer your skills, volunteer your abilities, your competencies. These are things people are going to look at and sit back and say, wow, okay. So if even not paying this guy, I'm getting this value added to my workforce, then I just have no option than to bring him in. And you never know. Volunteering has got people to where they never thought they would be. Yep. You don't only volunteer in Africa. We think when you are volunteering, you are volunteering for international agencies like USA. Those ones are gone. Just go to the woman who sells in the market and is not able to keep her books properly. Just volunteer as an accountant to keep her books in check. File her tax returns for her. Make sure that she's in good standing. And then you never know. She'll just say, okay. So I, I was going for a loan in six, year, six years ago. I wasn't able to get my books in order. But you came on and you've added value to my business. You can, you can get a part-time gig. And these are things that we need to do 
don't just sit down and feel that oh it's bad it's all gloomy it's job. <laughs> it's job. Then you start chastising the government oh this oh that no in your own small way do your little bits and pieces and you'll be fine yep so guys you need to stop talking and take action really for you to get that dream job of yours now the next question is how do i answer the question of why i am looking for another job in an interview where recruiters think i was laid off because i wasn't good enough i think you should be honest like i said i got laid off to july 2019 and you know when i had other interviews i had interviews with people different companies and when you ask me oh why are you leaving where you are and i tell them literally that i was laid off you get so my for me it was just being honest you have to be open let them see that it's not most of them will not even look at it like it wasn't that you were not good enough now in a situation whereby you were not good enough and the question should be what should i do because i'm sure they will have spoken to you like oh okay these are the reasons you're probably not performing you know they'll tell you they will make it obvious objective you're not performing your performance here is not this or the skills we need the skills the skills gap is too wide you know they will let you know so basically a situation whereby you already know that what do you have to do you know you have to start working on those things that they've highlighted for you because you need to move forward now in a situation whereby coronavirus i don't think anybody's going to judge you because of that and nobody's going to judge you because you lost your job now the point is moving forward what has happened has happened you can't dwell on the past for long or you're afraid that oh if i lie lying won't take you anywhere let them know people lose their jobs so it's not going to be it's not going to be a new thing you know it's new for you but to them it's actually not new so be honest be open i lost my job oh what did you do what happened and you let them know they can ask you follow-up question that oh so what steps have you taken to this to do this to do this and you let them know like i also said i said focus on the future the future is what is there what are your skill sets you know what are you bringing to the table you're looking at the company oh why do i want to join jobberman nigeria why it is me now this is you on this job you're being interviewed for this job not for your own job so you're trying to sell yourself that oh i have this you know your vision your goals everything aligns to my passion you know i have a passion for this i have a passion for that sell yourself and i'm sure that those things even the reporter will not even remember that will defy you because you were able to sell yourself better you know then connect your answer to the job you don't want to be going round and round you're doing very good round because you want to answer one question it's different <laughs> So what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Focus it on the job. Why are you applying for this role on the job? Why do you want to join our company? So you have to remove that mindset that, oh, I got fired. You got fired. It has happened. So let it go. Let it like literally go. It's the same way someone says, oh, I got hard work on. You know, you move on. You get to love again. So it's the same way. It comes to the office. You know, you got fired. You move on. You get another job. Do you understand? So, Joseph, do you have anything to say? Yes. Um, I think in my last role, I got fired. <laughs> we got fired. Just <laughs> yeah, we got fired together, yes. But the question I ask is, I asked myself was, was it a matter of a skill gap? Mm -hmm. Was it a matter of a competency gap? Was it a matter of me not knowing what I needed to do? Was it a matter of communication? Yep. What was the issue is it an issue that i've rectified over the period or is it an issue that i'm still sitting down blooming or crying over <laughs> nah we won't do that and i remember when i came for an interview i was asked why are you looking for a job because they felt that somebody with this kind of experience this number of years your skill set you shouldn't be looking for employment but i i said to them this is it I was doing something the company wasn't comfortable with and as a human interface or the human interface of an organization you don't normally have to be the better for the organization you have to be that middle point that people could come to you could also go to them so that is what was the issue i explained it to the recruiter 
he understood that there are certain times that you have to just make a decision to either work or get fired. That decision will always come. And that's where you are honest about it. Yep. If you, are, if you think that you just got fired because um, you were not doing something right, or you were doing the right thing and they didn't think it was right for them to have you on board, you just let the person know. And this is the skill that you have. And that is what you've learned out of it. Because in those instances, you always learn from it. You always learn from getting fired. You always because you come home, yes, you always do. You come home, sit down, and analyze the things you would have done differently. The different approach to you getting to the same result of the person that you did not factor at that point in time. So that is very key, sitting back and taking that retrospective look at what the, yes, whatever went on. Once you have that retrospective look, you can always go into an interview chest out because you know that this is time for you to speak your mind. This is time for you to tell them how you were able to get through whatever you are doing. And then, like I always say, this is the time for you to sell yourself. Sell yourself, guys. You need to sell yourself. Sell yourself. Yep. It's just a matter of one minute. Tell me what you are bringing on board to my organization. That is what that question means to me. Why were you fired? In that at that moment, it means that. Well, why did you? Why are you job hunting? Because I'm bringing value to your organization. I can do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The other person sitting there can do A, B, C, D. I have an edge over the person. Try me, and you're not going to lose it. At that moment, you have to put yourself in the room. Let them know that you know what you are about and you know what you are going to say. Once you have all this in your artillery, you'll be able to fire. And when you fire, you fire straight at the target. Yep. You fire. So, guys, you've already heard it's not the first time it's happening. It might be the first time for you, but it's literally not the first time a recruiter will hear that, oh, I got fired. Do you understand? So, don't, don't make it a thing about, oh, it's not them, it's me. You know, if you're tripping yourself or be feeling, you know, move on literally move on it's, it has happened it has happened yep so um the next question here is now joseph you're going first what is the best way to approach recruiters when looking for job opportunities <laughs> that's a very that's a, <laughs> i'll start with using myself um somewhere in around march when i realized that the the light is getting dimmer and dimmer every day. The, the inevitable is going to happen because I wasn't ready to do whatever I needed to do. That's what I did. I started reaching out to people. I just started reaching out to people. How do you do that? There are various ways to do it. I had two main channels I was using. I was attending job fairs and I was doing LinkedIn. So these are the so I'm going to give both the physical bits and also give the LinkedIn approach that I use. So on LinkedIn, I was more writing about my previous um, episodes of work. Um, it was basically writing about my skills, what I can do, the things I've done over the period, the successes I've chopped over the period, and then just selling myself out there. I don't know who had money to buy, but I was just putting it out there just giving it giving that information that out. <laughs> you understand? I was just giving out for free. Yep. So in my role, this is what I did and was able to move this from this to that. It was just free education for people. And the interaction bit was very important for me as well. People came back to me asking, oh so if you can do this, why don't you do this for me? Give me an idea of how to do it. And that is how I got out there. Now the physical bit when I attend job first, what do I do? I walked straight to this recruiter and just offered a handshake, a very firm one to show that I wasn't there to joke. <laughs> you know that Charlie was for that kind of woman. A very formal handshake to tell him that I'm serious and then introduce myself and then um, my name is Joseph. Um, I'm visiting your stand here because I know that I've gone through, I've done a background check about your company, and I realized that this kind of expertise is needed. Yeah. Period. I ended there. Wow. The guy knew that once I knew more about this company, then the conversation could start. Okay, so 
what do you think of A, B, C that we are having on board here? And I said, okay, I think you should have done things A, B, C, D. And then once there was that conversation ensuing, you realize that, wow, there was an opportunity there. Rather than go to the stand, <laughs> this is job man. I hear you give jobs. <laughs> you looking for a job. Yep. Mm-hmm. The person has no CV. Nothing. Nothing. Yep. And just comes like, I hear you a job man. I've been applying since 2014 on your website. I've not gotten any job. But the question is, have you found out the kinds of rules we are having? Have you found out why we are not, or you are not being selected or even shortlisted? These are questions I think once you ask any recruiter on display or at an exhibition center, the person is obviously going to have a, a, a conversation with you. And then you realize that the conversation will ensue till the person say, let me have a look at your CV. Yeah. And that is the opportunity there. Once an employer has a look at your CV, and they think that you have something that you realize that they keep the CV. Sometimes they'll tell you, forward it to my email. Yeah. You understand? So at that point, I think what is difficult is the how to begin the conversation. A lot of people don't know how to do it. And it, these are networking skills that you have to get. Yeah. How to approach the greeting is very essential. The greeting will either tell me as a recruiter you are serious or not. And then I move on. If you come like that flappy one, Charlie, what's up? I'll just move on. Are <laughs> you go like the ladies go like hello? See my hello. You're not serious. <laughs> my name is who wants to know the kind of hair you are wearing? <laughs> yeah. You understand? So let's just be very serious about it you are not going to joke it's the once in a life opportunity you have you have to shoot your shot shoot it yes. shoot it and make sure you hit the target so like i said once I've, i started churning out a lot of information received a couple of invitations on linkedin even though they were not interviews they were so they just wanted to know more about me and here i am today on here yeah, i am today at home that's just that dream job people he got it so you just have to you. <laughs> that is it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, so that is just it. Just be intentional about it. Yep. Be very forceful. Know what you want to do, and you can do it. Yeah, true that. Then one other thing I'm going to add because you know, just have said it all, is do your research now. When you're approaching recruiters, I feel like if you want to know more about them, check their LinkedIn. You know, their their posts. What industry do they post more about? Because recruiters too, they work smartly. If I come in and like, oh, HR, I'm looking for a job. They already have like a folder that they put, you know, they will have them, they will have put them in different classifications as two to three years, two to four years, five to 10 years. So your own resume can land in any of those things. So, but you have to do your research first. Look at his LinkedIn profile. Oh, his industry is FMCG. His own industry is tech. That way you know more and you know that my chances with this guy, with this recruiter, those guy, is higher than the one in FMCG since I want to, like I'm in the tech industry. So you have to be able to do those things so that you're not just, you know, falling your hand because you already know it's very obvious. Go through their, their page. You see it. Oh, I'm looking for this person, you know, with this, so, so, so. Some of them is educational sector. That's where they are. Some of them is NGO. You already know that. We don't deal with anything less than an NGO, you know, to make everything faster. So I feel that that's another thing you should do that will help you. Then you can now go ahead and, you know, send your emails, send your mails and connect, you know, build the right rapport with these people and let them know that, oh, these are my skills and I'm looking for a job. And one other thing that Joseph said that I want to emphasize is that you should understand that recruiters are not working for you. They're working for other people. You know, but you want to leverage on this opportunity to get that job. So don't make it look like, oh, jobber man. Sometimes, you know, when I wear this t shirt outside and 
some people are kind of like you hear comments somebody literally stopped me one day like, you people don't want to give me a job that i've been applying on your website i just smiled at first i panicked i'm like whoa what's going on but i just smiled and i told him like i'm joking that have you updated your your profile do you apply for jobs how do you do it and at the end of the day it was just banned because he doesn't even apply he wasn't even serious about it first and then he just saw somebody job a man and he's like you people you're holding jobs and in my head i'm like no why not people are actually getting hired from us so yeah guys these are things that you want to do once you've done that best believe recruiters know their job they want to close roles you know they want to be able to <laughs> it is it is an achievement for them oh this role i was able to close it no matter how hard the requirements are you always see them so every cv or every profile they get is not a waste because the next role they have it can be used that they will use it to that to close that they will use to close that role. Do you understand? So guys, those are ways that you can, you know. Um, let me add uh, let me add just one more thing. Okay. Um I think the other way to also approach a recruiter, the most simplest of all <laughs> is can you please review my CV for me? Well, it depends. You know, these guys are actually very busy. Imagine they're very busy. They're very busy. So if you come and say, yeah. please review my CV for me. First of all, I don't even think it's the right way, to be honest. Because in their head, mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, I can do it. But right now, I don't have time. So don't have the time. So we realize that we will reply you, please review my CV. On to the next. So if you say so something that interests them, sorry, like you say, oh, uh, I noticed that you mostly post jobs in the FMCG industry. Let them know that ah, I've been following you. Do you get? I know you to an extent. I've been doing this and now I want to sell myself. That way I'll be inclined to open it. Oh, is it me in the FMCG industry? Great. Then we're going to have the conversation. Because if we just go and see if me review my CV, they're like, oh, another person moving on to the next two so, years. Yeah. Yes, I think I agree with you on that angle. Yeah. But you see, sometimes, sometimes, like you are saying, you are very busy, that I'll just rather open a CV. And that will be even after the first formal or informal conversation. You don't just, hello, hi, then you send a CV. <laughs> and you do a CV. It's not done. You understand? So yes. a brief description about yourself, which industries you think you work for. And there's one thing I want to let me address that issue on linkedin you see people saying you hello how are you in different messages hello how are you please i hope you are fine i realize you work for this company in different 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 so imagine you are in a meeting and your notification alert is on on linkedin you receive tinkulum 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 where all you could have done was just get into one paragraph yeah attach your cv send and that was it and that's it so one very annoying i'm using the word annoying because sometimes it can be very annoying for a recruiter to be receiving notifications alerts on his or her phone when you all you could have done was just send one email or send a whatsapp message yeah. or send a, a message or a text in one bulk for it. Yeah. It's very irritating. It's a put off. A lot of people will just avoid you. They won't take you serious. Whereby maybe you are the kind of person they are looking for for their current role. But because they don't do it, sort of, you don't just, I know able to even have them in mind or in thought. So the way you go about your introductions are very important, especially on social media. Very, very, very important. Thanks. You're welcome. So someone is asking, so currently with the pandemic, what do we do in place of firm handshakes? Yeah, you cannot shake because of coronavirus, but smile. I don't think somebody will smile at you and you just frown and walk away. You don't know, your smile might be like, it might just be something to encourage the person and person will be drawn to you like, okay, and you know, you have the conversation. With the person if you cannot you know shake the person pretty much i hope i answered your question yeah yeah that's true 
Yep. So now the next question is, what can I do to get busy while I'm waiting for another job to come? What can I do? Yeah, it's, you know, the first step or the first step is that you are even willing to do something. So yeah, one, we're doing free soft skills training. Guys, I cannot emphasize this enough. Soft skills will take you places, you know. It will take you places. These are things that they don't teach you in school. We we'll use four years, five years, depending on the type of school you went to. You use how many years in school? For soft skills, they will not teach you. They won't teach you teamwork. They won't teach you all these things. And we're bringing it to you on a platter of gold. Here, take, eat, digest, do everything you want to do with it. And it is free. Now, the amazing thing is you get your certificate. So, guys, and it's free, literally. Just sit down. Depending on how, oh, if you put it that I want to do it in a day, you can finish it. I want to do it this weekend. Today is Friday. By Monday, I want to be able to get my, I want to get my certificate by Sunday or by Monday morning. And I put it on my, I update my resume and I start applying for jobs. Go ahead and do it. Because it is, you're investing in yourself. Pretty much. Nobody's going to do that for you. Not even your company. So it's you that will not take your growth on your head and, you know, do what you have to do. Now, another thing is volunteer. We already said it. There are some technical skills too that, you know, you have to get on the job to learn. But how are you going to learn it if you're in the house? Go out there. Volunteer wisely. Now, don't just go and volunteer, oh, because I'm looking for a job, you know. For some people, it happens that they, 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 they find their own career path in what they wanted to use to waste time. But for some people, you know, you already, you already know what you want. Oh, I want to be a communication, spe um, a communication specialist. Where can I, you know, where can I do, where can I work, where can I volunteer that will take me to my big time goal? That's what you want to do. You don't just want to jump on any job and say, oh, I'm jumping on this because I don't want to stay at home, you know. Then update your skill set, like I already said, you know. There's always something new in your industry. You cannot know it all. There's always something new. Take a book, read it. You know, they say something about black people. That if you want to hide something from black, black men, write it in a book. So take a book. Read the book. Learn something. So in your field, HR, go out there, look for books that you can, you know, that will help you out. For people that don't know how to start conversations with people, go out there, wrap up building, look for something that will help you, you know, that will push you out and also like add value to yourself. Just a different thing to say. The only thing I have to say is to re-emphasize your points with regards <laughs> to personal development. Yep. Personal development is everything that you need to add to your certificate. Yeah. A certificate, personal development, and experience. These three things is what lands you your job. Soft skills training is part of the personal development bit. Where, like she said, those things you will never learn in the classroom. I remember in the HR class, we were taught comp and benefits. We were taught um, training. We were taught um, performance management. We were taught conflict resolution. But nobody taught us about teamwork. <laughs> they will do. They will. You understand? They, they, they will discuss the subject negotiation, but they won't add the skills to it. No. You understand? So that's the only way you can get to get to be abreast with whatever you do. You have to have that continuous self development bit. It should be a conscious effort for you to be deliberate about it. That um, I don't, I don't think I have these skills. To enable me succeed and this is the effort i'm doing and jobberman is giving that free opportunity like she said it's giving that very free opportunity that this is it i'm offering it on a silver or a silver platter take it eat enjoy and when as a recruiter when i see that on your cv that you have a soft skill training people pay several thousands of cds in ghana for that soft skill training and we are offering it to you for free. So you have to take advantage of that and also build on the, your rapport building. Yeah. The, the networking bit is very, very, very key. You can get a job, but when they invite you to the panel, then you start shaking. 
Yeah. You understand? There was this girl that let me just digress a bit. There was this girl that we were on. A, there was a there was a panel where she was invited. She was the best when it comes to technical, when it comes to knowledge about the rule, yeah. the skill set. But when she came, uh-huh. eventually she lost the rule because all oh, you are working with humans, and if you can't speak or you don't have a, a dialogue or a conversation, then why are we getting into the door? Then let us get to your remote work somewhere where you only sit behind your laptop and then you give information. You do whatever you do. You understand? Yeah. So that bit is very, very essential to everybody. And that's how you can land your dream job. Yeah, guys. So you heard it. I hope you are taking notes and, you know, you put this in practice. You know, you can still get that job before the end of 2020. Come on, we still have like how many days? We still have a lot of days. So yeah, that can work for you as well. Now, the next question is, are there signs to know companies that have the tendency to sack people? I want to avoid a repeat of what has happened to me. Now, you have to do your research again. See, this whole job look, job search thing is 90% research work. Literally, you can decide to do chapter one to chapter five. It is research work. You have to sit down and do it. Now, you are finding out what you are finding out, sorry. You are finding out what you'll be looking out for is how often do they recruit for this particular role? Do you understand? For this role, is it every three months? Is it every month? How often do they recruit for this role? Or similar roles? Because you want to know that if it's like every month, your chances there are very slim. What makes you think that they're not going to fire you too? Except you just want to try it. But, ah, let me shoot my shot. I may stay longer. But these are already signs for you to see that ah, that means by next month, this ad will come up again, that they're looking for this particular person again, or this role again, you know, that kind of thing. So it already gives you an insight to what it is. Now, it's simple. LinkedIn has made it easy for you. Social media is there. It's very easy for you to be able to talk to people that are not even in your geographical location. You know, you want to reach out to people that have been working in such company. Like, for example, if you want to join Jobberman, you go on LinkedIn, type Jobberman, search, you see Jobberman in people, and then you can easily reach out to them or to get more insights about the organization. You know, if it's something you want to go into, if it's like, okay, like, yes, I want to work for this company. Then lastly, you need to be sensitive and pay attention. If you know, like, if you're sensitive enough, I think we're humans. Our bodies always give us signs, but then you should be fast to grab it you know not that you should not be misreading these signs but you should be able to see it imagine if your line manager is complaining about you monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday literally back to back to back to back to back you're not doing this right and not doing this right and doing that chances of you staying in that organization is slow because at the end of the day you're dragging the team back and they need to go forward so it's either you start working on yourself you've noticed it now two weeks this woman has been saying, I've not been doing this thing right. You can easily go and meet her. Oh, how do I do this? Okay, what do you expect? You know, have so that you can see a clearer picture that will help you out in what you're going to do, what you're trying to achieve as a team. Not that you now be just there because if you're just there and then you're going on frustrating, frustrating your line manager, frustrating your colleagues, chances of you staying is really, really slim. Joseph. So, um, proud to today. I shared a few thoughts with some HR professionals yeah. trying to understand um, how people from the outside see their business and how they are able to make an idea of whether it's a growing, it's a growing concern. Like I always say, it's like an organization that is growing and then an, an organization that has a high attrition rate. So basically, I'll say that, I'll say this two things. If you are from the outside and you see that this organization keeps having new faces every now and then it's a red flag then the follow-up question is why are they always having new faces is it that they push the people out or the people 
push themselves out? That is the question. If they push themselves out, why? Is it that they are not able to cope with the the activities of the business, or they think is the the grass is greener elsewhere, so they move away? But it's very key for you to, like you said, research about the organization. Anybody who follows me on LinkedIn should go and check a post I made in July or the first week of August. I don't know. So it was about the things to watch out for before leaving an organization or joining an organization. Go watch those signs. They will let you know that it's a place that has a good mindset or it's a place that has a fast track. The fast track organizations just want you to come and give them the tickets and then you are done. But that organization that has room for group will have a very long span. It's sort of giving the, the person the opportunity to grow, even when the person is doing a lot of a lot of things wrong. So research about the company, get to know the company, and then you are able to know the culture of the organization. Yes, yeah, that way. Yeah. That is very very essential. Know the culture. Is there a speak up organization where you can speak? Is there an organization that has room for you expressing your thoughts? Or is it an autocratic organization where information comes only from the top? It doesn't come from below. Yeah. These are things to watch out for. And once you see these signs, you should sit back and analyze and know yourself. Is it an organization I can work for? For me, the guy of the kind of guy who will not take any nonsense, pardon my language. I would not work for an organization that is not ready to listen. An organization that listens is an organization that grows with its employees because they listen to whatever the employee has to say and then they come together and they push the organization up. So that's what I have to say. All right. Thank you. Now, the final question here, we'll try to make it snappy so that you can ask your questions. Is, um, is it a good idea to take a low-paying job in the meantime? I'm really getting tired of the wait. <laughs> you see me giggling. What is it? You see me giggling. You see, you can hear me giggling. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. And that's because that's because I was telling a friend that I took a a, 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 a job with 150 CDs. That would be close to um I don't know how much in naira. That's about fifteen thousand naira or so for a month. I said graduate. That was the amount I took for a job. And it's very simple. I didn't go in for the money. Like I always say to people, it is not money. Money can't buy experience. You understand? Money cannot replace experience, not can buy. Money cannot re replace experience on your CV. That's the same way when you are on a high amount or a high salary and you don't have the required experience they'll let you leave so don't go in for the money i said it in my previous um chat with genevieve and i'm saying it here don't go for the money don't go for the money guys i, I hope you can hear mm -hmm. don't go for the money because there's more money to be made ahead once you have the experience the skills and the abilities once you have those things, there's more money ahead to be made. The ones you are seeing now is just peanuts. Just get yourself well prepared, knowledgeable, skillful, and very able to do the role. And the money will just flow. Right, legs, right, left, right. up, down, mm -hmm. everywhere. The money will, come. Money the money will chase you now. <laughs> the money really will chase you. Yeah. So thank you. You can ask questions, more questions. We have 10 minutes. You can ask more questions before we leave. Now, you can also take a low-paying job, but ensure that the low-paying job is relevant to you. Like I said, we've moved past um, leaving school or I just want to get any job to being direct. I want this job. This is what I want to focus on. So yeah, we can also work on that as well. So if you have any other questions, 
please feel free to ask your questions you know here and guys say thank you to joseph for joining us all the way from ghana thank you joseph thank you joseph it has been an interesting one um let's wait about two three minutes if i get any questions i will let you know you asked about a book somebody asked about a book for um you know that you can use you know well one of them is building rapport and relationships you can work on that there's all these domains and uh, rapport building for domains and all that so yes you can use one of those and it will help you out so if you have questions 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 feel free to ask so that we can you know if not we'll wrap this up now joseph you're the star here thank you joseph say thank you thank you <laughs> thank you you're welcome thank you you're welcome. Thank you thank you you're welcome. all right so one more minute questions questions feel free to send in your questions and you know we'll be able to help we'll be able to answer let me check if there are any other questions that i missed morning okay so guys thank you so much for joining one more minute and we will wrap this up if i don't get a question okay question has come in how can i get a job from another industry that is not my course of study welcome to nigeria <laughs> 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 it sounds funny right ah well literally hey welcome to nigeria i'm funny let me not do it but i think once you highlight what you want then the next step is highlighting the skills that you need now if it is something that you cannot develop yourself i think that you should reach out to people you might have friends you know maybe a church member that is, you know, sitting in that same position that will be able to help you out, you know, I like, oh, you need this skill, you need this, you know, take this education, do this, do this, someone that will help you. Another thing is you need a mentor that will also help you because these people will come in clean, they will take your growth on their head, you know, they will carry it, you need to grow as well. So those are things that you can do. Don't be afraid to start from scratch because it's obvious that you might not have, you know, experience that you that you will need but sometimes you can leverage your network imagine you selling yourself to somebody and they offer you the role you know and it's good so you don't have to start from being an intern or volunteering for that particular role but you're starting you know they're willing to teach you on the job and you're actually starting as a full-time staff in the organization so i think that will also work um just so you have anything to say um, the, uh, the only thing I want to add is, like you said, having a mentor and a coach to guide you through is very essential. And also, don't fret. Don't fret too much. The point is, the person who is giving you the job is seeing something you don't see yourself. So there's something that there that the person wants to tap into. Maybe you are trainable, which is a very essential skill that you need to have for those kinds of career swaps or career change you need to be trainable because the person has seen that there's some knowledge that he or she can or there's some adjustment he or she can give that is going to make you gain or get the best out so it's very essential for you to know that you are not alone the person who is giving you that role is going to be with you throughout thank you that's all, all right sorry someone else is asking my question is as a young graduate yet to go for nyc what advice do you have with regards to graduate sorry i don't understand is it that you graduated yes it is that you graduated what do you want to do go for your nyc you know they'll place you pending the time if you have to wait maybe but stream one is in camp right now you can you know volunteer somewhere three weeks is still something that you can use to learn let's see more you can still use it to gather the necessary skill sets that you will need eventually in the future you know to have the idea of working in a proper organization it might not even be foolish it might not be structured at all but at least knowing oh okay how to deal with people you know you might not really know how to deal with people like that especially because you're just leaving school and if you do not have the opportunity to do um serious internship so yeah i think you can also volunteer or you know Take the soft skills, take the soft skills training. 
do it, you know, take the headline test, get certified. You are one step ahead from other people that are just there. Okay, so um, getting a mentor in business consulting is challenging. I will keep networking. Thank you. You're welcome. You obviously get somebody. It might be hard, but eventually you will get somebody. You know, you also have to let people know that oh, I'm looking for a mentor. You know, that's one that goes, you know somebody, you know somebody, you know somebody. You can apply it here. You will definitely find someone to mentor you. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you, Joseph, again for coming live with us here. And we're going to call it a day. Thank you. See you guys next time. Bye. 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 Bye.